thought that a strategy that would be interesting to look into would be to be stay really low carb during like the morning hours and even early afternoon and then start kind of slowly introducing more carbohydrate during like the the last part of the running day and then in dinner that night. And she seemed to think like that would maybe help with potential like swelling and things. Um, and what, so like the big thing that could derail, obviously like this is like an exercise of just making sure I don't destroy myself at any one given time so that I'm able to get back out the next day. And like, like there's going to be like, like if I wake up in the morning and my legs are like super swollen, that's going to be very difficult to kind of sustain that for a long periods of time. I'll probably end up getting an injury before I'd make it to the East coast. If I'm waking up with a lot of swelling in my legs uh, and, and she, I, I believe I'd have to follow up uh, with her to see exactly what she meant by that. But, uh, I, I think like there would maybe be, a, a it might be a better way to kind of avoid that by staying lower in the carbohydrates rather, rather than going on the extreme, which I wouldn't do anyway. I'd be following some form of a low carbohydrate diet, regardless. I'm kind of deciding at how low I want to go, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. As to like, if I just woke up in the morning, where I was just eating like a bunch of refined carbohydrates and like pancakes and what you would expect maybe like a, a moderate to high carbohydrate athlete to do for a project like this. Yeah. I mean, there's really no way to, uh, experiment, right. Because it's yeah. not like something you, it's like you kind of, you're, you're in it. Uh, it's not like you run a, a couple training runs for this. Um, but I, I think you could probably, the idea is to, you're already adapted. So start low and then tit titrate things in as you feel it's needed. And I think um, a lot of biofeedback and, or, uh, you know, uh, CGM feedback may be important too, uh, to stay and, and take note of that and maybe look at your training now to, to realize where you're where that target range is, where you feel optimal, uh, where that target range is when you're overtrained, uh, the target ranges uh, or out of target range would be if you've overfed on carbohydrates, but uh, probably not a good idea to have like real high postprandial excursions in, in, in your glucose levels because that could do more harm than good, especially in this very... Uh, <laughs> precarious, I, I, maybe that's not the right word, situation you're putting your body into. So there's like really high metabolic stress and oxidative stress. So you don't want to spike your glucose levels into ranges where you could be kicking on processes that could, you know, exacerbate inflammation or oxidative stress. So I think maintaining glycemic homeostasis will be an important thing and not to go too low or too high right? It would be a very important thing. And I think that feedback, a CGM feedback could be really important in that context and probably be a, a you'll probably have a, I would think a, a significant advantage, not that you're competing against other people. Uh, but if you, so if you were competing against other people and you were wearing a CGM, I think that would be uh, a, a significant advantage The CGM and the software that's analyzing that data, I think could provide a remarkable advantage to to someone competing in such an event. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess I, I probably will wear one. Um, I think, well, I'll, at the very least, what I'll do is wear one in some of these, I'm going to do some simulations before whether I do it in an event or not is the only question. So what I'll probably do is I'll do at least three and maybe up to six days where I try to target kind of the mileage range, um, just to kind of get a good look at like, how many calories will I in individually burn at that kind of, uh, into, or that exercise volume? Because the way I'm looking at this is like, let's say I find out that I'm burning 11,000 calories a day or something like that during this effort. And I'm eating 10,000 calories a day. I'm not going to notice that I'm missing that thousand calories the way I would, if I were sedentary and eating 2000 calories a day, and then went down to 1000. Uh, just because the volume of food is going to be so much more than what I would normally do anyway, that I have to be pretty, or at least close enough that I'm not, you know, losing a pound or two a week, because then I won't make it to the East Coast either. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think, so I think like, uh, I'm going to do some of those trials where I get, I start to iron some of that stuff out. And I think like wearing that, the CGM for that will maybe give me a little bit of a roadmap of what I can expect to be the case. And then with that information, 
uh, have a little bit of a scaffolding to build off of, but also be mindful that, you know, week five might be different than day three of the, of a, of a little simulation and uh, mm -hmm. still respond to the, the CGM during the event or during the, the attempt itself, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Or, you know, maybe if you have a team and that data becomes available in real time that they can look at that and they would know, you know, I envision a scenario and I, I frequently talk about this, well, for the last 10 years, a scenario where, you know, we have real time measurement of glucose, ketones and lactate. And then that goes on to uh, into a software where people can view that and basically start engineering the nutrition that you need. And um, I mean, this is sort of like, you know, optimal for the warfighter or for the astronaut. So we, so we can fully optimize their metabolism for specific things. If they're gonna go into a mission, an underwater mission or an astronaut doing an extra vehicular activity, what we call an EVA, uh, you want to have their physiology, their, their neurochemistry, neuroscience, you know, that you want them to be optimized. And I think if that data is collected and available to a crew that could be assisting you, wow, that could, that could, that would be a game changer. I really think um, that you would have to understand how those parameters would be optimized. So you'd have to train and only through training and collecting data over time, could you understand where your performance is optimized and what those parameters should be and what the ideal ranges should be. And if they start to fall out of range or go above range, then you can make adjustments to your nutrition or supplementation to put them back into the optimal range. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think really that that's kind of like the future and maybe you could be taking the first step <laughs> towards uh, sort of using it in that, in that context, in that regard. Yeah, I think it'd be, it'd be very interesting because I think like with with levels too, like you can set that up where the data spits out off site, I think too, right? So like someone would just need to have access to my profile and then they could, you could, we could have someone sitting, you know, stationary somewhere off course, looking at that from time to time and seeing like what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm understanding, I'm still pretty new with the software on that as well, but I think that that is one of the, the features of, of their program, but uh, but like you said, yeah, hopefully I can produce some good data. I'm going to try to study as much stuff as possible or measure as much stuff as possible for this too. Cause mm -hmm. there's essentially an endless number of things. Like, I mean, like any research project, right. You can, there's an endless number of questions you can ask and eventually you have to narrow it down to a few and decide which ones are most important for you to mm -hmm. study. And, um, but you know, there'll, there'll be other folks available to help with that too. So that'll be kind of kind of a fun, fun thing to maybe, maybe a fun thing to add to the list of stuff to, to peek mm -hmm. into along the way. <laughs> yeah. If you can imagine like a multi-array sensor and we know that you're optimized at like 1.2 millimolar of lactate, two millimolar ketones and like 3.5 millimolar glucose or something like that. And to maintain those levels plus or minus, you know, 10 or 20%, but also to have things, you know, sensors that measure your electrolytes your potassium, magnesium, sodium, these things, um, and, and other, other parameters, you know, in the blood that, that are, are important, your hydration status. Uh, yeah. And be able to have real time closed loop, uh, feedback on that and to be able to make, uh, adjustments and maybe even like your, your blood caffeine level. So we know that certain, certain ergogenic aids are, uh, legal. And if they're legal and they have been documented to provide, you know, enhanced athletic performance, then, you know, technologies that can monitor them in the blood. And, and maybe one could say that ketones are a potential ergogenic aid. And we just happen to have commercially available technology, uh, unlike, you know, caffeines or hormones or, or, or hormones, I guess you can could, but uh, they're more like training aids, but we have a real time you know, metabolite in our blood and we have commercially available technologies where we can measure the level of that. And then we have technologies like exogenous ketones where we can adjust the, that metabolite level to achieve a, an optimal uh, threshold or an optimal range. Uh, and I really think that, I mean, you take people who are already at the top of their game like you, and then you add 
these technologies, these wearables, and then the real technology will be in the software, I think, to, to analyze those metabolites. And then technologies that would allow us to deliver those metabolites in graded amounts and in, in predetermined measure amounts, measured amounts to optimize your performance. So I think that's really, I think that'll take you to the next level, you know, but you're not.